In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christos Anisti, Alessos Anisti. Christ is risen, truly he is risen. Welcome to all our blessed teens around the world this year who are joining us here at San Sonoda Monastery through this magnificent invention, the online Zoom. Usually from the Sydney Diocese, every year we get together here at the monastery face to face and really have great time together. But this year and only this year because of the lockdown, we get together online. I thank very much all the blessed speakers, those who are managing the technical side of the online Zoom, and all those who are working behind the scenes. God bless you all. From the theme of today's gathering, we will cover the issue of the calling. We know that when God created us, he designated a special role to play, to achieve, to do in this life, either for ourselves or for others, such as becoming a monk or a nun, becoming a priest or a wife of a priest, becoming a full consecrated deacon or consecrated diaconess, becoming a missionary or married with a blessed family. How to know our calling? This is a very big topic to cover all today, but we will do our best to brief you about these few callings. Since I am a monk from St. Anthony Monastery in Egypt and an abbot of St. Shinoda Monastery here in Sydney, I would like to say a few things about monasticism. Monasticism is not just a calling, but it is also a self-desire. The person has to have the constant desire and the joy to be with the Lord more than anything else. He loves to pray, to praise the Lord, to serve the Lord at all times even before coming a monk or a nun. The person loves the biographies of the saints and loves to imitate them. The person has to be very humble and pure from the evil of the world and from all the fornications of the world. He or she has to get the approval of their confession father and their parents before coming to the monastery. He or she should, should know that monasticism is not just being in a monastery or dressing like a monk or a nun, but it is what is in the heart of love, joy, peace, and forgiveness. He or she should always be vigilant and in constant struggle against the fleshy desires and the worldly desires. Monasticism is a big blessing. It is a life of the angels, the martyrs, the apostles, and the saints. At the beginning of entering the monastery, the person is given a new name this is to remind the person that he or she has to forget his and her past in every aspect and start a new life with a new name and a new dress. Looking forward and never backwards to the world. It is a new birth. We are also given a new name of a saint so to, so to be supported by him or her in our new lives. We've been told by St. Anthony the Great that on the day of our monasticism, all our previous saint sins are all forgiven and being given a new page, 
in a new life. Monks or nuns are called heavenly humans or earthly angels. I better stop here. We can say a lot about St. Anthony the Great and about monasticism. But I leave you now so to hear about another callings and many more other segments. God bless you and, and, and have a good day and I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the day. May God bless you all and glory be to God forevermore. Amen. How have you been uh, holding up with this lockdown? Uh, any, anything, anything good that came out of it? That for you um, personally? Well, I'm an only child, so I have to be really creative with entertaining myself. Um, nice, nice. I think I like, you know, started painting. I'm not very good at it, but like, you never very know. Nice. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you so much, Marina. Thank you. Um, Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm from Vancouver. I go to... St. How are you, Andrew? How are you going? Good. How are you? Thank you. I go to St. George. St. George Church and nice. I've just a uh, fun fact I I just started drawing and I, I, I like drawing I'm not that good too <laughs> awesome yeah. so this this pandemic and it brought the best out of people Yanni. everyone everyone started their talents it's awesome so what what do you look forward when you're to bored. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you do something creative when you're bored, huh? <laughs> yeah. So what do you what do you look for most uh, when you go back to church? Uh, once once Having everything's communion. open again. Having communion, nice, very nice. Well done. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you. God bless you. Um, my name is Maria. I'm from Melbourne and I go to St. Verena's church. How are you, Maria? How are you going? I'm good, thank you. How are you? So what have you been doing this uh, free time in your free time? Um, I don't really have free time. I've got school online. Um, okay. Yeah, but what I like to do is paint, so. Nice, nice. A lot of artists we have, huh? That's nice. Do you, um, ha have you done anything that we can see? Um, in, on my background, do you can see? Oh, nice. Very nice. Well done. Hi, I'm Anthony Nimotella, and I'm I love from... I love your name, man, uh, because I'm a born Anthony, so I love your name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, How are you, uh, Anthony? How old are you, Anthony? I'm 13. Nice, nice. Yes, where are you from? I'm from Connecticut in USA, and I go to Holy Theodokos and St. Athanasios Church, and um, something about me is I play the violin and viola. Wow, wow. Yeah, sign him up for SF Tunes, huh? Very nice. <laughs> it's, no, it's awesome. It's very good. So, so have you been practicing during this uh, pandemic time? Um, yeah. I'm locked down. Yeah? yeah. yeah uh, so, day. you must have gone really good, huh? With all this practice. Yeah. That's awesome. Very good. Do you, uh, is this your first time cycling in a while? No, I've been cycling every day now because it's the only thing I do whenever I'm bored. Nice. Very nice. Uh, what other mm -hmm. hobbies have you picked up during this time? Um, uh, coloring with my family and drawing. Good stuff. Well done. Well yeah, done. How old are you now? You. 13. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank awesome you. to see you. Awesome um, to see you too. Hello. Hello. Who's this? I'm Karen Iskander. I'm from Jersey City, New Jersey. I go How to San Mark. Good. How are you? Very good. You got us at Mark's Church uh, in Jersey City? Yes. Nice, nice. How is the, um, uh, how is your lockdown been? Good. Um, keeping... Yeah? Nice. Yeah. Try to keep busy? Yeah. That's excellent. So what do you look for the most when you go back to, uh, to church, when you start going back to church? Uh, definitely taking communion and fellowship with our servants. Do you personally like it uh, online or do you prefer uh, to see people, like to go, like especially school and Sunday school and church and stuff like that? Uh, definitely in person. I feel like sometimes, like the online is fine, but I feel like 
in person we get to connect more and like it's easier to communicate with each other and discuss like it feels more of a fellowship correct well done well said how old are you um 16 Mm, good thank you so much oh hello how are you going there there it is hey how are you yes so yeah this is my my other son go ahead nick guys my name is nicholas um where you from nick st mark chicago nice Mm-hmm. Nice, very nice. And your brother? Andrew? I'm Andrew Moad. How are you, Andrew? Nice I'm to good. see you, Andrew. Nice to see you too. Awesome. Yeah, good to see you, man. So, Nick, what, do you, what have you been doing this uh, lockdown, during this lockdown? Uh, me and my brother have been playing a lot of ping pong. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can tell you spending a lot more time in the kitchen. You know, you're taking this yeah. video in the kitchen, so you don't really get out of it very much, that looks like. No, we've been eating a lot. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> my brother is good at baking. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. What about you? you? You good at eating? So he bakes and you eat? Is that how it goes? Yeah, it's, we're, we're a tag team. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Works out well, huh? <laughs> no, nice. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Uh, Anne Sawiris from yes, Charlotte. Yes, hi. How are you going, Anne? I'm good. How are you? How old are you, Anne? I'm 17. Nice to see you. And what have you been doing this, uh, these uh, days? Um, I've been trying to pick up the ukulele. My parents got me a ukulele for my birthday like, a couple years ago. So I've been trying to like actually learn it. Yeah. Nice, nice. Do you, uh, so you, you didn't know anything about it before? This is the first time you actually <laughs> start holding one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I like, play the violin and the piano. So I like... Like I'm like pretty like musical, and so I like asked him to get me a ukulele just so I could like awesome, pick up awesome. the instrument. Mm-hmm. Very nice, very very nice. That's awesome. And what's uh, what's uh, what's it been like for uh, during lockdown? Are you enjoying it? Not enjoying it? No. You sick of it? You wait till uh, can't wait till it's over. <laughs> no, I'm so ready to leave. Yeah, no. Oh, <laughs> well, really? Yeah. It's so you enjoying it? No, I'm not. No, I'm ready oh, to like, get the house and go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, wow. yeah, fair enough. So you've been keeping up with your Sunday school uh, class and your friends from church and, yeah? Yeah, so Very we just nice. got what? a Bible study before this, so yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So what do you look forward uh, to the most when you get back? Probably fellowship. We, I, I really miss my friends and like going to church and just be, like being able to like see each other in person, so yeah. Mm-hmm. So online fellowship doesn't work, huh? No, it's good. It's good. But it's just like different, like being like in person, like actually getting to like see Abuna and like all the Sunday school teachers and my friends in person. Nice, nice. Hi. How are you going? Whereabouts are you, whereabouts are you in the world? Uh, we're in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Oh, is there a place called Bethlehem? Wow, that's cool. Never heard of it before. <laughs> so what have you been doing, Danny? Um, I've been doing... A lot, of, a lot of homework, uh, some, some biking. Nice, nice. Good stuff. What about you, Angie? Um, I have been biking. Um, I, I have a lot of homework for school. So. Nice, nice. Wow, they don't leave you alone, do they? No. No. <laughs> Fair enough. And your sister, what's your name? Gabby. In the background? Gabby. How are you, Gabby? Good. Have they been good to you? Have your uh, brother and sister been good to you? <laughs> oh, she's thinking about it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, thank you, Danny and Angie and Gabby. Uh, do you have someone else? You. Hello, uh, Jonah. Hi, How are you, Jonah? Good, thank you. How, How are you doing? going? Good, thank you. Where are you from, Jonah? So I'm from Sydney, Australia, St. Mark's Church. Wow. Yeah. Well, come on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, and what have you been doing uh, lately, Jonah? Trying to keep fit because sports been cancelled, which isn't fun. So, yeah. Mm. Nice, nice. So what do you play? What sports? Uh, in the summer, I do water polo, and then in the winter, I swim. Good stuff. Good stuff. 
Father Elijah Eskander, who is a priest from St. Mark's Church, Sydney. Um, he's the kind of guy that will deliver a very powerful sermon on Sunday and then dunk on you um, later that same week. Um, so he knows a lot about victory. And today he'll be talking, about, um, talking to us about victory over sin, um, specifically St. Anthony's um, struggle um, in the wilderness. So please welcome Father Elijah, who's online with us. So... If you want to know anything about St. Anthony, a really good place to start is a book written by his friend, St. Athanasius, the apostolic, um, the one who was uh, the pillar of faith and the patriarch who uh, was responsible for defending um, you know, the, the doctrine of the church, especially around the heresy of Arius. So St. Athanasius and St. Anthony, maybe you don't know, they lived at the same time and, and they, they had a really good relationship. And so St. Athanasius wrote this marvelous book, The Life of Anthony. And you can actually find it online free as a PDF. It's about 85, 90 pages. Um, really encourage you to read. Uh, and a good proportion of that book is actually all about how St. Anthony was victorious over sin and victorious over Satan. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, he just won. You know, it was, you know, like destroyed Satan. It was overwhelming victory time and time and time again. Um, so much so actually that you don't get the sense that St. Anthony was scared of Satan. In fact, he, he would mock Satan and he just thought that Satan was absolutely nothing. And would, when he was teaching the many young men who followed him into uh, the solitary life, um, and the life of monasticism, um, he would also encourage them to really have no respect whatsoever for Satan, for the opposition. So we're going to go through, by God's grace, five lessons from St. Anthony about how to have victory over sin. And I'll read for you some excerpts from the book written by St. Athanasius. Um, and the first of those is prayer and especially the Psalms. Now, St. Anthony's fight against Satan wasn't like ours, but often it was really tangible, really physical, hand-to-hand -hand combat even, unbelievable things. For example, St. Athanasius writes, he, referring to Satan, attacked the young man, disturbing him by night and harassing him by day, so that even the onlookers saw the struggle which was going on between them. And other times we read of Satan physically beating St. Anthony up so that he needed to be attended to for some time. And then St. Athanasius continues, Satan would suggest foul thoughts and Anthony, St. Anthony would counter them with prayers. So if, if prayers are strong enough to defend St. Anthony from physical hand-to-hand -hand combat with Satan, Combat which is so strong that even people walking past in the same neighborhood, they think, oh, gee, what's going on over there? How much more so can prayer give me victory in my struggle with Satan? The devil appeared to him another, on another occasion, and St. Anthony responded immediately with the Psalms. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can you do to me? So St. Anthony, he defended himself. He had victory. Over, this, over sin, over Satan, by prayer, and especially by praying the Psalms. Uh, and this is because he understood very well, St. Anthony, that we can't have a victory over sin alone. Do you know, sometimes, like, let's say you're struggling with, like, watching things that are inappropriate online. And then you think, okay, yep, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a filter on my laptop. Or I'm going to, you know, make a promise to a friend and, you know, or I'm going to like uh, chuck my phone out the window. So while all those things are good and they're important, it's not enough to do those things on your own. You can never have victory over Satan by yourself. So Anthony taught us that. He could have said, you know, I'm going to, you know, escape. I'm going to, you know, read. I'm going to, no, he prayed, he begged God for help. So don't think that if St. Anthony was unable to conquer sin, but on his own, do you think that you will or I will? Of course not. I can't have victory over sin by myself. It's not only the practical things. I must pray and beg God to help me and have mercy on me. 
St. Athanasius writes, For the Lord was working with Anthony, the Lord, who for our sake took flesh and gave the body victory over the devil, so that all who truly fight can say, Not I, but the grace of God which was with me. And in that passage there, um, St. Athanasius is referring to 1 Corinthians 15, which says, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So the first lesson that we learn from St. Anthony about how to be victorious over sin is to beg the Lord for help and to pray and to pray especially the Psalms. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. And I just share with you a conversation that I had with Amba Aras from the Bishop of Brazil. So his grace, um, uh, he's very kind and like I... He sent me a message on Easter and I was embarrassed and replied and said, Happy Easter, Seed. And so while I have the bishop on the line, I said, let me ask for some advice. Um, how, how do we keep our relationship with God strong and fiery, especially after Pascha week? Although Pascha week this year was a bit different online and things, we all really enjoyed it and we all really felt like we were just having a week with God alone with no distractions. So how can we make sure that we don't drop off from that? Now during the Holy 50, especially when now when there's no fasting and there's no prostrations. And, you know, and he said something like really beneficial to me. Uh, he said, what you are doing during Pascha week, keep going. If you are reading, keep reading. If you are praying, keep praying. And he said, although there is no fasting and there's no abstinence, you still must have control over your body. He says, eat and enjoy the feast, but have control. You know, so eat the meals. There's no need to eat until I'm absolutely full. There's no need to sleep excessively, eat so much that I'm drowsy and sleep unnecessarily long in the middle of the day. So you enjoy the feast, but I have to discipline my body, as St. Paul says, bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself have become disqualified. Lest all of the benefit that I've gained over Pascha week and the Lent, I lose in a week or in a fortnight afterwards. Surely God doesn't want us to feast so that we can just lose whatever benefit we have just had. So St. Anthony prayed and St. Anthony was ascetic. The third lesson that we learn from St. Anthony is that he never looked back. He never, ever looked back. And what, what's, whenever you hear that phrase, oh, don't look back, you automatically associate it with negative things. You know, so like you stuff up an exam and then you think, okay, no, don't look back. Hopefully I'll do better in the next one. Or, you know, you miss your three-pointer. Not that I know what that feels like. Um, and then you think, oh, okay, it's all right. Um, I'm going to like, just get, don't look back. Let's get the next one. So we always associate that principle of not, not looking back with negative things. But St. Anthony, strangely, he had that principle about that, but also about the positive things. Don't look back, you know, because sometimes you think, oh, you know, I had such a good workout, so I'm just going to eat McDonald's. Don't look back. Keep going. Oh, I had such a good passion week, so I can relax now. Don't look back. Keep going. I had such a good prayer, such a good Bible reading, such a good service, such a good whatever, and then that makes us complacent and lazy. So St. Anthony never looked back, whether it was positive or negative. And there are two verses that St. Athanasius writes in the book that St. Anthony would live by. Firstly, Philippians 3.14. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the goal. I move forward toward the goal. I look forward, never back, toward the goal. And then interestingly, St. Athanasius writes a passage from Elijah, from 1 Kings that Elijah said, the prophet. Then Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. Elijah said, I will surely present myself to him today. For he observed that in saying today, the prophet did not compute the time that had gone by, but daily, as though ever commencing, he eagerly endeavored to make himself fit to appear before God, being pure in heart, ever ready to submit to his counsel and to him alone. So St. Anthony never looked back. He never looked back and, you know, maybe remembered a mistake and, re and like regretted it. But he also never looked back and said, oh, I've done so much. He always wakes up. I will surely present myself to him today. And for those of us 
who are struggling with repeated sins. This is a really common thing, right? Like when, especially for teenagers, like I, I go to Abuna, I confess that I swear and then I you know, want to stop and I'm there a month later saying that I, I'm still swearing. And that might be true of many, many other things, sins. And I think, oh, what's the point of this? You know, I'm not really getting anywhere. But I just remember St. Anthony. He never looked back. And his goal every morning was that I, Lord, will present myself to you today. Don't look back on the negative things. It'll stop me from and, and maybe lead me to despair. And also don't look back on the positive things because it may prevent you from keep you know pressing towards that goal for the prize, as we read in Philippines. So St. Anthony, he never looked back. So tomorrow morning, wake up, forget about today and present yourself to the Lord, you know, as a sweet aroma. The fourth thing is St. Anthony was so honest um, in his prayer. Uh, you know, sometimes you, when, you, when you see like the picture of a saint, or the icon of a saint in the church, you just imagine that like they were just perfect and they, you know, never doubted and they never had a question and they never had a concern and they never, you know, no problems. Um, but the, when you read the Bible, for example, the Bible is never embarrassed to document the shortcomings of some of the heroes. The, the Bible was not embarrassed to talk about how Saul persecuted the church before he came St. Paul. The Bible was never embarrassed to talk about St. Peter, um, you know, acting impulsively, chopping off the ear um, of the soldier in the garden or denying Christ. So there's an amazing prayer that St. Anthony prayed in the midst of his hardship, which St. Athanasius records. And St. Anthony says to the Lord, and I'll paraphrase because some of the, like the book that I read from is in Old English, so I'll paraphrase slightly. St. Anthony is praying, Where were you, Lord? Why didn't you appear at the beginning to stop my pain? This was in the context of you know, a battle with the devil. And a voice came to him, the voice of the Lord, saying, Anthony, I was here, but I wanted to see you fight. Since you have endured, I will forever be a support to you and will make your name known everywhere. Having heard this, Anthony arose and prayed and received such strength that he perceived that he had more power than his body than formerly. And at that time, he was 35 years old. Similarly, St. Paul, you know, three times he says, Lord, lift this thorn in the flesh from me. And the Lord finally says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So don't be shy to be honest in your prayer. God is your father. Some people say, should I pray about this and should I pray about that? Uh, and I, I think God is your father. So just say, Lord, I'm not sure if I should be praying about this or not. I'm embarrassed to be praying about this, but this is what's on my heart. If it's pleasing to you, let it be granted. If not, remove it from my heart. But don't try to like, you know, come to the Lord honestly in prayer. Pour out your heart before him. Don't try to tell him what you think he wants to hear. We do that sometimes with our teachers or with our parents. We kind of answer the question based on what we think they want to hear. Be honest. Be sincere in your prayer. The Lord, Anthony was so sincere. St. Anthony, so sincere. You know, where, where were you, Lord? Why didn't you come in the beginning and, and stop my pain? And look how the Lord answered him. So be honest in your prayer. Um, and the fifth, and the, the, it, it was very difficult to limit it to, to five. It could have been 10 or even 15. But for the sake of time, the fifth is that St. Anthony looked to the scriptures for guidance always. When people would ask him a question, he would answer with a Bible verse. When he would encourage the, you know, the, the monks who started to follow him and live as monks as well, he would always, you know, his sermons were just half the Bible, more than half of it is the Bible. Not, nothing from himself. He, he told the monks in one of the talk, it talks he gave them, the scriptures are enough for instruction. But it is a good thing to encourage one another in the faith and to stir up with words. So can you, can you guys do that? Read the Bible. So anything says, it's enough. If you, need, if you have a question, if you need guidance, if you need, the scriptures are enough for instruction. But it's good to encourage each other and stir each other up with words. 
And that's part of the reason why we all benefit uh, from hearing. You know, we all benefit from hearing and being encouraged and saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do that. I'm going to try that. Um, and, you know, one of the consequences of, of St. Anthony living his life guided by the scriptures is that he had no respect for the devil. Sometimes like, oh, I was scared of the devil. Oh, no, the devil is so strong. Oh, the devil, you know, he made me do it. Oh, the devil, you know, like it's, it's scared. Like St. Anthony, oh, he, like he, you just really get the sense that like he, you know, as I think Mark mentioned, to get a slam dunking. That, that's like St. Anthony would slam dunk on the devil all day long and then step over him like Iverson. You know, this, the script, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can YouTube it. This is disrespecting the devil. The scriptures are enough for instruction, but it is a good thing to encourage one another in the faith and to stir up with words. So St. Anthony would always remind the monks, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon over all the power of the enemy in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, verse 19. So the Lord has given us authority and we pray this in the Thanksgiving prayer every day. So what, what, what am I scared of? The Lord has given us power to tread upon ser serpents and scorpions. He even observes that, do you know, you know that when, when the Lord removed um, the, the devil from a demon-possessed man, and it says, let us enter the swine. They asked the Lord, please give us permission to enter, you know, leave this man and go into this field of swine who then run off over the cliff. And St. Anthony observes, if the devils don't even have power over the swine, how much less do they have power over you and over me? He was never scared of them. And then whenever the devils would come to him in the form of, you know, beasts or a woman, you know, to entice him or some scary noise or whatever, he would just mock them and say, if you were, if you actually had authority, if you actually had power, you wouldn't need to do all of this circus to get my attention. I'm paraphrasing. You wouldn't need all this circus. But because you have no power, this is what you need to do. So he really just had no respect for Satan because he read the Bible and believed it and lived it. So if we want to have victory over sin, we learn a number of things from St. Anthony. Number one, pray, and especially the Psalms, we cannot do it on our own. Number two, asceticism. I have to have discipline. I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Be guided by your confession, Father, about how to do that. Although we can't do it alone, doesn't mean that we do nothing. Thirdly, St. Anthony never looked back, neither, neither on the good or the bad. Every day was a new day. As the Lord of hosts live, I will surely present myself to him today. Present yourself to the Lord faithful today. Don't worry about yesterday. The Lord wipes the slate clean. He removes my guilt. He removes my shame. So Anthony was very honest in his prayer. Where were you, Lord? Why didn't you come at the beginning to make my pains cease? Be honest in your prayers with God. Don't think that you have to pray and tell God what he wants to hear. Pray and be honest and be respectful and just tell the Lord what is on your heart. He is our Father. He loves us so much. And finally, he was, St. Anthony was always looking to the scriptures for guidance. Um, the scriptures are enough for instruction but it's good for us to encourage each other sometimes. And there are so many consequences which happen if we are living life guided by the scriptures. And one that really runs strongly in St. Anthony's life is absolutely no fear, no respect, no regard for Satan because the Lord has given us victory. Thank you guys so much. Um, I really hope you enjoy the rest of the day and please pray for me.